Here's my attempt at measuring the vibrational amplitude of my ultrasonic horn. I've got the horn mounted on a rigid steel base plate and I've then got a very accurate micrometer head moving a large steel ball bearing so it can be brought very close to the end of the ultrasonic horn. The ball bearing is biased to 15 volts through a 47k resistor so when the the ball bearing touches the horn the voltage across drops to zero, it, the, they're shorted out and that can be detected with the oscilloscope so for example just now the voltage is at 15 volts because the ball bearing isn't touching the horn if I move it in until it is then you'll see the voltage drop to zero like that I had originally hoped that there would be sufficient capacitance between the ball bearing and the tip to give a reading but the capacitance is so infinitesimally tiny that it's extremely hard to measure so instead I come up with a slightly different solution if I move the ball away from the horn tip first of all and start it start the horn oscillating um, I'll give it full power here turn the horn on so and then move the ball in So I'll zoom in on the time base. Um, stop. Uh, turn the horn off just now. These drops, these um, drops from 15 volts down to zero, that occurs when the vibrating horn tip comes in contact with the ball and this obviously occurs once every cycle so at that position the, the the horn tip is vibrating like this and the ball is just touching the horn at the peak of its vibration so let me uh, just reposition that again to get a more accurate volume the horns at resonance there. Move the scrubber in until we're just getting there. And we can switch the horn off. So that is a position of forty. 7 microns. Now with the horn switched off I'm going to move the ball in further until it shorts out. To there. And that's a reading of 34 microns. So that is an amplitude of 13 microns vibration because uh, at this setting we're touching the horn at rest which is in the midpoint of its movement when it is vibrating and before we were touching it at the peak of its vibration so let's try that again just double check it Power on, turn the horn on, just 
that's at 48 microns this time move it in further till it shorts out we're at 36 so 12 microns roughly about the same uh, this amount of vibration is basically on the limit of what you can measure accurately with a mechanical setup like this but um, it does work um, this is only really useful when the horn is vibrating at resonance because that's when the amplitude is greatest when it's operating off resonance uh, the, the amplitude is so small that even this couldn't detect it. So uh, what I really wanted to do was to be able to do a frequency sweep and then plot the vibrational amplitude versus frequency but this technique obviously isn't going to work for that. But it will work for measuring it at resonance um, which gives about 12 microns amplitude. That's been driven off um, uh, 130 volts um, amplitude uh, square wave signal from the inverter. It's important to note that the, the body of the transducer and horn must be grounded. Um, the, the output of the inverter is floating relative to ground because it's coming from the isolation transformer there. So I can ground either terminal. I've grounded some light here. I've grounded this one, not that one, because this one is connected it's in touch with the horn body. So that uh, red crock clip goes off to the power supply zero, and the black one is the scope ground as well. So just remember, to do this, you, you need to have an isolated um, inverter output so you can ground it uh, safely. The plan after this is to try and make some sort of fibre optic reflectance sensor that is hopefully sens uh, sensitive enough to detect um, maybe micron level vibrations in this and will also have an analogue output so I can do a frequency sweep and measure the vibration spectrum. Uh, so we'll see how that, that works out. Okay, hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching.